I, I think every day is like a, <laughs> is like breakthrough obstacle, breakthrough yep. obstacle. Yeah. Like that's that's just kind of how it goes. A lot of this stuff we uh, were, as I said before, we we're missing expertise, especially like we're dealing with intense science sensors that are, are, are sensing like molecules in the air. And there's lots of like places along the chain that you're measuring uh, where, where things can go wrong or you can lose accuracy throughout. And so we had to really understand our sensors and we had to really understand the analog to digital conversion. We also have a potentiostat in our circuit that is a source of error. And so we have to like fully like kind of become like mini experts in, in at least those three areas just to get accuracy working. There's also the, the added difficulty of um, the specific microcontroller we're using, the, the ESP12F subtype of ESP8266 has like a lot of GPIOs for being an ESP8266, but given that like we're supposed to essentially have one potential stat circuit for each one of our gas sensors and we have five of those, we have a dust sensor and a, uh, and a GPS unit that both communicate on UR, like we want to be able to debug it, we want to be able to have onboard memory. So figuring out not just how to, how to make all these things work, but how to, how to like mux between them and turn some off and turn some on and see, you know, and really know is that going to affect the accuracy or is that going to make it useless, like how's that going to work together. There are two big things that we're hitting on. Uh, first, that uh, sensor technology has vastly changed in the last decade. So we're, we, we found uh, a couple good sensor vendors that are using newer, cheaper technology. So we can hit the, uh, like the OSHA and uh, NIOSH and all these government agencies that make sure that your sensors work good enough to measure uh, air quality in the workplace to protect employees. And we're trying to do that, hit those standards, but also be cheap at the same time which we think we can do. There's also this, this sort of, um, the, the air quality monitoring markets are kind of split between consumer end and commercial grade. You know, so we're talking like four or $5,000 broadball sensors versus $150, you know, stick in your living room sensors. Yeah, when we came out of space apps, we actually thought we were gonna go more towards that really low end uh, consumer side, but, um, one, that market's totally saturated. And there's not really a lot of need uh, for the everyday person. And even in that, at that price point you're talking about, like you're not really getting any re really re reliable data. Um, so we're shooting for sort of that middle ground. So having the, the lower end of the commercial spectrum, something you can have constantly watching, constantly there, constantly on, rather than showing up and paying a guy, you know, $15,000 to do an on-site inspection once every six months.